Hey everybody, happy Friday. Welcome to another episode of Daily IoT. We're starting the episode with a quick mail time. I'm not that you care, I'm just really excited about this. Losant sent me a package with uh, some stuff. They sent me some like 3D printed logos, which are pretty cool. Maybe it'll make for a cool like thumbnail shot if I hold it up real close like that. Losant, a couple stickers, a Node MCU, which is really cool use that in a project, and a sweet t-shirt. So shout out to Losant, thanks for the swag. Um, I wrote a blog post for them, I think I mentioned it, but I can't remember if I put a link to it, so I will link that up in the description below. You can check it out. It's a, it's a walkthrough of how to get the, oh, off camera here, fridge eye, the part of the book that I'm working on, but the light and temperature sensor hooked up to Losant with a bunch of cool workflow things. So uh, you can check that out if you're interested. I'm also going to do an episode during the texting dryer project dedicated to setting up some Losant workflows so you can see how that works. Really cool platform. I'm really excited about it. I'm glad I found it and started playing with it because um, it's cool. I like it. Okay, enough of that. What I want to talk about briefly today is I've been working on getting the code already. I want to get it all packaged up, put it on GitHub, um, because I don't want to just provide videos where I'm talking about the project and then show it's done. If anybody happens to want to recreate it, I want the code to be available and easily uh, accessible to clone out of GitHub and set up so that you can recreate the project if you desire. And so I was getting the Trinket code um, all pared down. I got it down to less than 50 lines of actual code. It's like 58 total, but that's with a whole bunch of comments and a little license section at the top. And so less than 50 lines of code. And what I realized when I was doing that is that the, the RFM69 library that I'm using, uh, I downloaded through the Arduino IDE, but I had to make some changes because the Trinket is using the ATtiny uh, chip, which is not supported by the RFM69 library. And so I had to make some changes there. It also, to use SPI, Arduino doesn't support SPI. Remember that was a lesson learned on the Trinket. Um, and so I had to write my own little SPI mini library, just enough SPI functionality to allow the RFM69 uh, module to work. And so I wrote both of those things and that's great. I could package that all up, stick it in a GitHub repo and then ship it and call it good. But what I realized when I was looking back at the changes I made to the RFM69 module, it's, it's on the screen here, you can't see it, but is that this library is forked a lot. A lot of people have forked the RFM69 library and done tweaks to it to fit their project, which is totally cool. You can do that. That's one of the beautiful things about open source. But something that a lot of people don't think about is feeding back into that system. And so when I was looking at the changes that I made to the library to make our project work here, I thought, wow, these are things that might be useful to other people. It's just a couple of pound defines and a few tweaks. Uh, to serial output, which uh, the Trinket does not have a serial um, out on it like standard Arduinos do. And so those tweaks, I think I'd like to try and push back up into RFM69. There's no reason that I should just have that chunk of code that I enabled for this be sitting in an isolated repo that is in my account. And so I'm going to reach out, I haven't yet, to Low Power Lab and see if they would be interested in taking a pull request back up to them for the changes that I made to make the RFM69 library work on the Adafruit Trinket. And so if they're not interested in that, I keep my fork and we move on in life and everybody's happy. But I think they, I mean, if it were me, I'd be interested in taking that because then it just allows my module or plat my, my code to work on that many more platforms. And so something to think about, it's, it's cool to fork things and play around with them and get them working. But if you've created something that might be valuable for other people, like merge that, create a pull request, merge that sucker back up into the main repo so everybody can benefit instead of having, you know, 50 forks and you got to find the right one. And so um, that's where I'm at with the trinket code. Um, I got I to gotta be honest. I've been thinking about canning the Raspberry Pi and switching back to a, like an electron or a photon. Um, I did find quick update that I didn't need the extra power supply on the RFM69 connected to the Pi. I can just run it off the 3.3 volt. The power requirements being a receive node are very low. Um, and so it can totally handle that. That was something that was unnecessary. I have taken that out, still works great, straight powered from the um, Raspberry Pi rails. And so that was one thing, but I'm thinking about the Raspberry Pi, 
I, I don't want to use the C++ library. The node one is kind of flaky. Do I want to figure that out? And I'm starting to hesitate and think, ah, I could probably just get this all working on a Photon or even an Electron and just have that running 24 hours a day because the only thing that this is doing right now is running the RFM69. Do I want a Pi running all the time? I don't know. Maybe I'll do them both. I'm just, I'm torn. So maybe throw down in the comments, like tell me which one you want to see. Do you want to see the Raspberry Pi or switch it out for uh, a Photon as the no, as the gateway for our texting dryer project? Help me decide. I'm just, I'm waffling back and forth on it. So uh, any input is appreciated there, but it's coming together. Um, I started working on the MQTT. I don't know if you can see our drawing. It's in the background there. I talked about that channel and found some very interesting things. I've been researching MQTT like crazy, reading tons of stuff. I'm gonna put some links down in the description that you should definitely check out if you wanna learn more about MQTT. Great information. But I went to the big players, Microsoft, Amazon, and Google to see if they had a cloud MQTT broker. and. Uh, Google's is still open for beta. They're looking for industry people to come in and try their IoT cloud solution, MQTT broker and suite thing, whatever you want to call it. So that's out. Um, Amazon was the first place I looked and their MQTT offering through the Amazon AWS IoT, I think is what it's called, is super deficient. Like it, it's missing major features of MQTT. And I'd like to do, maybe um, over the weekend I'll film a little thing on MQTT and the important parts of it, but Amazon's implementation is missing some very important pieces, in my opinion, that make it almost unusable um, as an MQTT broker uh, based on some of the, the features that it is missing. So I was really surprised about that. Uh, so then I went to Microsoft and Microsoft had, had a, a couple of things that Amazon didn't, but still missing some features. And I was just they're not unusable, neither one. I could use them to get MQTT messages up into the cloud and then on to our you know, texting service or whatever. But at that point with the, with the core MQTT features missing, why wouldn't I just use HTTP at that point is, is kind of where I ended up. And so um, interesting, so I, I wrote a blog post about that. I'll put that down. Man, the description for today's episode is getting big, a lot of links. Um, but good information. Uh, I kind of spelled out what the deficiencies were in those. And so uh, I did find a few cloud MQTT uh, as a service providers that I would love to check out and, and play with as part of this to learn. I just, I'm trying to suck and learn as much as I can, suck in as much information as I can. So I think I'll play with one of those to see if it'll work. Um, so that's where the MQTT is at this point. It's all kind of coming together. It's piece by piece, a lot of learning going on. Um, if you if you have questions, if you have questions about the project that you think I'm leaving information out, let me know and I will definitely talk about it. Um, but I think that does it for today's update. I think that's all I've got. Um, question of the day, for those of you that have made it this far in the video, my question of the day is, how can I make the show better? What is the the one thing that I could do that would make the show a better experience for you or make you want to share it with other people. Um, talk about things in more detail, show more things, talk less and, and do more like just what, whatever it is, whatever it is that I could do to make the show better for you. Uh, stick it down in the comments below. I would really appreciate the feedback. I just, I want to make this as valuable as I can for the people watching. And so let me know how I can make the show better for you guys. Um, I appreciate everybody watching. I do appreciate the engagement I've been getting in the comments. I love hearing from people, so keep that up. I really feed off of that. I love responding to every single person. So I hope everybody has an amazing weekend and look forward to seeing everybody next week on Daily IoT, the show where together we're learning how to make the Internet of Things one day at a time.